This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hoffmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue with the transfer of training with book 3 In chapter 2 this is section 4 Beyond the Subject Object Split Part 1 David Today we will go through the dreamer of the dream section. Suffering is an emphasis upon all that the world has done to injure you. Here is the world's demented version of salvation clearly shown. Like to a dream of punishment in which the dreamer is unconscious of what brought on the attack against himself, He sees himself attacked unjustly and by something not himself. Text chapter 27, section 7 The last sentence highlights two central ideas. Attacked unjustly and by something not himself. Attacked unjustly, you know. It's not fair. And the idea of something not himself brings in the subject-object split. That something not himself could be another person other than himself that he identifies as a person or it could be a dog. Someone could perceive being attacked by a hurricane or a tornado. But it is something that is not himself. Beneath all of those things, which seem to be quite varied in form, there is still the subject-object split. There is something that is doing the attacking and there is something that is being attacked. If we go a little deeper, we see that it is the body identification or the personhood which is the subject. A body or a person can also seem to do things to itself. Like the statement, I keep beating myself up over this. Of course, this is not the real self. It is just an image. Even with self-inflicted wounds, it is still broken up as if the self is an image in linear time. It would seem that somebody who cuts their own arm with a knife is causing a self-inflicted wound. But that still is not self with a capital S. It is the image. It is just the past. It is another image just like an image of an intruder coming into a house, so to speak and inflicting a wound which seems to be different from a self-inflicted wound. In both cases, bodies can seem to harm other bodies, and bodies can even seem to harm themselves. But all of them are projections. All of them are just images that seem as if they are inflicting harm on oneself, or another seeming self. The basic premise of the course in is that mind cannot attack. That is why mind is innocent because mind cannot attack. The wrong mind is part of this construction in which it believes that it has left its abstract reality and has taken on form. Bodies can seem to attack. The illusion of attack seems to occur in form. Friend And there is a sense of that in expressions like I am warring with myself or other commonly held notions we have which allude to having two parts of me. Even the expression, part of me feels, alludes to parts that do not agree. David, 
Whether it is a self-inflicted physical wound or whether I am having a war in my mind right now, they are both just statements of the wrong mind. What mind is at war with itself? You even have to be careful when you talk about warring and different parts. Again, the right mind and the wrong mind are not at war because the right mind does not respond. The wrong mind, you could say, attacks, or even better, the wrong mind is just a belief system of attack. It is not like it is an entity. It is the illusion of attack. The images that seem to be at war are always different segments or aspects of an illusion. For example, a runner might say, I am not really competing with someone else. I am competing with myself. There are still two images. The mind is holding on to an ideal time for running the mile. Maybe a record that was set in the past. Now it believes it is a separate image from that. And it is going to try to beat that time. Whenever we are talking about competition with or attack upon the self, there are still images that are involved. Friend, where are the images when someone inflicts a wound on oneself? David, the hand holding the knife, you could say, and the arm that is getting cut. Friend, what I hear you saying is that It is just a demonstration of the duality which is in the wrong mind. It does not take two of anything, not two bodies, not an attacker and a person being attacked, or a victim and a victimizer. It is a duality in the mind, not even the physical duality of a subject and object. David, it is projected out that way. Even if you say self-inflicted wound, there is a hand holding a knife and a wounded arm. You can still see the duality perceived in the world even in that example. You could say there is just one person, one body. But there is one holding the knife and one receiving the blow, so to speak. The deceived mind does not want to see that it is holding on to a false belief system. So it projects the split out into the world and it sees duality. A cleaving of what is one into all these parts. That is where all the extremes come in. Hot and cold, fast and slow, male and female, high and low and so on. Right arm, left arm, right arm with knife, left arm without knife. You could break it up any way you want. The key is to begin to see that there is not any duality in the world. The world is just a screen. The key is to learn to discern what is all the same and what is different. What is the same? All the images. Everything on the screen is the same. What is different? The right mind and the wrong mind. They are different. They are two different purposes in mind. They are not alike at all. One is the reflection of reality and the other one is non-existent. That is different. They are different in every way. So what we keep coming back to is a clear understanding and recognition of what is the same and what is different. All seeming upsets involve an ambiguity about distinction. About that distinction. You have to believe that specifics are different from one another for them to seem important. Whether it is a full cookie jar or an empty one, whether the rug is clean or not, 
You could go on and on and on. All the seeming difficulties that come up have the underlining assumption that there are aspects of this world that are different from other aspects and that some can be better than others. The whole point of all of this is to come to the awareness that images are images are images. Illusions are one. There is not any causation in the world. Talk about rest. What would you need to do? What conflict could you feel if you realized that there is no duality in this world? That there is no hierarchy of images? Miracles would be universal. There would be no order of difficulty in miracles. You would have on your hands the last miracle and the first. The Atonement We pause here today and continue with the last and final part of this section 4 of chapter 2 of book 3 in tomorrow's episode.